Welcome. This is a presentation from DIY Marketing, where we say, yes, you can. Now, roll up your shirt sleeves and get out your elbow grease. You're going to learn how to become a dynamic DIY marketer. Hi, this is Lauren Dar. I am coming to you today from DIY Marketing. And we are going to discuss design considerations for a logo. This is very important for you, especially if you're just starting out as a small business or an entrepreneur, or even if you're a solopreneur. Um, you want to make a plan for having a logo that you can use consistently. Uh, over time, you want it to be a good logo that is timeless. Why? Because you're starting out, you have a um, limited budget, and you want to save money. So these are some things I want you to consider for developing the logo for your business. The first thing I want you to consider in developing a logo for your company is to make sure that your logo is versatile. You need to make sure that you have a logo that's developed that will work in different sizes and formats and will work for both a website, work for business cards, work for letterhead, envelopes, and brochures. It needs to be versatile throughout all of those different marketing elements. So it also needs to work consistently for print mediums and electronic mediums, whether that's online or if it's being used for television. Think about the future use of your logo also when you're developing it. Maybe you're not thinking about it today, but maybe in the future you're going to need to develop an app uh, for a phone or a device. And so your logo will need to work for that. And also something that's become a lot more prevalent is social media. So your logo definitely needs to be versatile and work with that also. Another element to consider with, in developing your logo is the coloring of it. A general rule of thumb is that the more colors you have in a logo, the more expensive it's going to be to uh, get that printed. Now, it's not so much with electronic devices and online, but definitely with print materials, you can get into some high costs, especially if you have a lot of PMS colors and um, say you even have up to, to five. Uh, that can be very, very expensive for an entrepreneur. You want to make sure and be careful not to have too many because it in, can increase the cost. One rule of thumb that I like to try and convey to small businesses and companies, especially if they're starting out, is to try and develop a logo that maybe has two colors. Those can be great. There's a lot of things that you can do with it, especially if you have a creative graphic designer. This will also help make sure that your logo will reproduce well. And you need to make sure that when it comes to color, your logo will reproduce well, whether it's in color or whether it's in black and white. Because if you decide to do a sponsorship and uh, there's an ad that's running in, let's say, even a high school yearbook at some point, a lot of those will require that whatever you uh, provide to them is in black and white. So make sure that your logo will show up uh, as in black and white, as uh, sharp and crisp. Also, when it comes to colors, please make sure that you avoid fad colors. Like if fuchsia is popular today, I can guarantee you that fuchsia is not going to be popular tomorrow. So please avoid fad colors if you are looking for a logo that you can use that is timeless and will be consistent uh, for a long period of time. Another thing to consider when designing your logo is the size of the logo um, and the design. You need to make sure that it's going to be legible at multiple sizes. Avoid having very intricate fine line details uh, especially if you're going to blow those up really big. If it's blown up really big, it might show up okay. If you need to have it really, really small, like is required with some of the social media websites, uh, when you have just a small tile area um, or even small tile ads, 
a lot of the design elements can fade away when you make those logos smaller. So make sure that it's not too intricate of a design when uh, you develop the logo. The last thing that you need to consider when you're having a logo developed is the file formats. When you're working with a graphic designer, make sure that you get your logo in all of the proper formats that you need and in the proper colorization that you need. Make sure that you know if you have specific Pantone colors in your logo, what those specifically are. So what are the different file formats? Well, you will need to have different ones for a website, for example, like a JPEG or a, a PNG file for a website, whereas print might require something else, like an Illustrator, EPS, or AI file. So you need to make sure that you have those, and no matter what format that you have those in, they will show up as high resolution and high quality um, so you don't get pixelization and um, fuzziness with your logo. So those are some things to, to consider when you are developing and designing a logo. And please feel free to go to the website and make comments. Or if you have any questions uh, about anything that we've said in our video today, feel free to ask. We welcome those also. And thank you for joining us at DIY Marketing. TV. This has been a presentation of DIY Marketing. Thank you for joining us. Now get out there and market because, oh yes, you most certainly can.